Hi, it's Tibby Singh, and you're probably wondering what this is. Well, this is an old trunk that I transform into a coffee table for money for nothing. And it's not a normal coffee table, it's the one that transforms into a desk that also has storage. And in this video, I'll show you how I did it from start to finish. Right, so I've done a small sketch on how I plan to transform the trunk. And I've also made a one to three scale model. And this is how I envisage to transform it. So I'll take the lid off its hinges and remove it from the base. And then I'll cut out the sides. So it's not only for aesthetic reasons, but it also has ergonomic benefits as well because you can slide your feet under this section here. And then I'll reuse the base for the internal storage slash shelving. And then finally place the lid on lift off hinges so you can transform it into a desk. Let's just hope it goes to plan. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take all this ironmongery off because it'll just make it easier for me when I come to sand down the trunk. I don't have to work around all this. And because these add a lot of character, they are the vocal point of the trunk, I do plan to reuse these. And also they do add a lot of strength that's the whole purpose of these because potentially this would have been used as a suitcase and you can see it's definitely well traveled and also i'll reuse the handles but unfortunately on this side the handle is broken so what i'll do is i'll see if i can make one which will make it easy to move around Right, so you can see that there's a lot of paint build up on these dome head screws and I literally cannot get my screwdriver in to turn them. So what I'm going to do is use a hacksaw and just create that groove again, scrape out the paint. And I should be able to get my screwdriver in and take the screws out like so. I'm just going to take it off and you know it's old when you have to use a flat screwdriver Right, so I've taken all the ironmongery off and now I'm going to give it good old sand and get it back to bare wood. Okay, so I've sanded down the trunk. Well, I guess it's not a trunk no more. No, it's a table, yeah, so let's, um, let's refer it to as a box. So I've sanded down the box and it's come out really nice actually. The timber's in good condition, which is a good sign. And it wasn't too bad actually getting rid of the, the paint because it only had one layer of paint, which I believe must have been the original colour, which is surprising. Usually it has about three, four, five layers of paint. So that's good. Now the next step is to cut out the sides to form the shape of the legs. Okay, so I'm ready to mark out and form the shape of the legs. And now there's no right and wrong with this. However, I do want some kind of symmetry just to make it look aesthetically pleasing. And also there's a few things to consider. So if I make this too low, I'll be losing that space to put your feet. But if I make it too high, I'll be losing the internal storage space. But at the same time, I need to make it deep enough so the lift off hinges can go inside and be hidden. So it's a little bit like snooker. You have to think a few steps ahead and hopefully I won't be getting snookered. Right, so I'll come 125 millimetres from this side. 125 millimetres from the right side. 
and the top. And make sure that's parallel. Join them lines up. And then instead of this coming straight, it wants to come slight at an angle to give it that feature. We'll make that 225. Come 225 from this side. And join these lines up. Yeah, I think that looks good. Right, I've marked it up and I'm ready to cut it out. And as I say, measure twice, cut once. We've only got one shot at this. You can always take more out, but you can never put more back. Right, because of the shape of the circular saw, it doesn't cut right into the edge, so I'm just going to use this Japanese saw to go, cut that final bit. That's it. Starting to look like a table now. Okay, so things have started to shape up and it's looking more like a table now. And it's always a good idea to make the legs so it has minimal contact to the floor when making a table. And the reason for that is it's just less likely to wobble and rock. And the exciting news is I've received my hydraulic lift off hinges smooth operator so i'll measure up and see what these are like my only concern is that they aren't high enough so i'll see what the dimensions are and the final height of the table and take things from there right so i thought i'd test the table out at this stage I think I deserve a sit down. Wow, yeah, that's perfect. I can get my feet underneath, I can stretch my legs, which is great. Um, and I'm just gonna test out the lift off hinges to see what the finished height is, which was a little bit of a concern. So, if I just, Clamp this in the position it is going, which is going to be here. And you can already see that is a little bit low. My tabletop finishes here. I literally cannot get my knees underneath there. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any bigger hinges that actually fit into this opening here. However, there is a solution to the problem. With these offcuts that have come out from the side, I can extend the bottom by maybe four inches. All the way around. And that should give enough space for my knees to go underneath the tabletop once the lift off hinges are open. And by using the old timber, it'll just blend in with this seamlessly. Right, so I'm just cutting a slither off from the bottom of the trunk all the way around to give a nice machine cut. So when I do come to join another piece at the bottom, it'll give a seamless finish. 
Right, so these are the offcoats that have come off from the side of the trunk. And it's great that I can actually reuse these. And it's a typical example of waste not want not, and also not throwing anything away until the project is finished. So these will be getting put to good use. I'm gonna cut strips of 105 millimeter pieces. So I'll be able to get two out of each one, which makes four in total. And that will give me enough to add that extra piece at the bottom. That's the second piece. Just making sure they are the right size and they absolutely bang on. So that's what I was on about doing two machine cuts and when they join together, you can hardly see that joint once it's glued and screwed. There we go, we have the four boards cut and ready, and that's the wastage. I wonder if I can make anything out of these. Right, so I've cut all my pieces of timber to the right width and length, and it should go like this at the bottom. And I've kept the end grain to this side so it continues all the way down, making it look like one piece of timber. And to fix it, I'm not going to fix it from the outside, which will look unsightly. I'm going to use pocket hole fixings, which is a discreet way of fixing from the inside. Right, so I'm just using this pocket hole jig to create the pocket holes. I'll just clamp this in place. that in place so it doesn't move and I can drill two in one go So that means now I can screw in from the inside when I come to join these two pieces together. So I've done all my pocket holes in these timbers, so that's all ready to be screwed together and to the bottom of the trunk as well, or the coffee table. What well, will be the coffee table, I guess. And to give it extra strength, I'm going to use these dominoes. And what these are are basically a modern way of doing a mortise and tenon joint. So the domino machine will create a slot which acts as a mortise. And then these dominoes act as a tenon. And when it comes together, it creates a strong joint and also just keeps it flush. Right, so I'm just going to create the slots for these dominoes using 
this sophisticated piece of machinery and I'll just explain how it works. There's basically a drill bit inside this tool which actually rotates and turns from left to right, which I'll just demonstrate. It has various different settings and once that's set, you just let the tool do the work. There we have it, and the domino then just slots into there, creating a solid joint. So I've drilled all the pocket holes and I've done all the slots for the dominoes, and it's just a case of gluing it together and screwing it together. So I'll just apply some glue on this end grain here. made my two pieces that I'm going to add to the bottom of the table to gain that extra half. So I'm just going to do some slots on the bottom of this table and then glue and screw it together. Just check if see to see if this fits okay. So I've glued and screwed the bottoms to gain that extra height and all I need to do now is follow this line here to form the shape of the legs. So I've made it higher now and just by gaining 100 mil, it's made a massive difference which I'll just show you now with the lift off clamp, not lift off clamp, with the, the lift off hinge. And you can see there now, if I'm sat normally, my knees do go under the, the uh, desk, which is great. Really happy with that actually, it's come out really well. And it's blended in seamlessly as well, so it's a good job we had these extra pieces of timber. So the base were made up of two pieces of timber and I've sanded it down, which is coming out really nice. So what I'll do is sand both of them down and cut a clean edge on one side. So when I do come to glue and screw them together, They'll come together really nicely without leaving any, any gaps in the middle there. Right, so I've sanded the bones down and I've cut a nice clean edge on both sides. And now you can see they come together really nicely. And what I'll do is I'm going to cut some slots on both sides and join them together using these dominoes. So 
So I've done the slot and that domino will just slot into place. And I'll do that for both edges and then just apply some glue on the edge and clamp them together. Okay, so my next job is to infill these side sections over here. And the reason why I'm doing that is just because it'll give a better detail and also it'll weight the table down and it will need some weight due to the lift off hinges. So it also gives me an option to actually pour concrete in the sides here. So to infill the sections, I'm using this lovely piece of 7x1 and I've gone for pine wood so it just matches the original timber. And because it's not wide enough, I'll cut and join two pieces together. Right, so I've cut all my 7x1 timber and I'm ready to do my slots for the dominoes and I'll screw them together with pocket hole screws. I'll put the pocket hole screws facing inside so you don't see it visually from the outside. And a quick tip when joining timber this wide together is always to alternate the end grain. So if we look at the end of this timber, the grain over here is going upwards and on this one I flipped it over so it goes downwards and the reason for that is the board is less likely to cup one way so form a u-shape and that's why they only make boards to a certain width because the wider it is it has more chances of forming a u-shape or cupping right so this is a pocket hole jig and all this does is is create an angled hole from the face of the timber which allows you to screw two pieces together. So I'll just clamp that in place so it doesn't move. And then with this special drill bit, I'll drill the hole. So you can see that it's created a hole and when I do come to join these two boards together, it'll screw in like so. Right, so I've done my holes for the pocket hole screws and now I'm going to do some more slots for these dominoes. So I'll do one here and one there. So it should be sufficient and give it enough strength when the boards come together. Right, there we have it, I've done all my four slots on both the boards. So these dominoes will slot in to here, like so. And I'll apply some glue on this edge. And Beautiful. Okay, so I've made my two boards up and I've sanded them down. They're looking really good now, nice and smooth. I'm ready to cut and fit them to the sides. So the first cut I'll do is this angled cut here. Just set my bevel up to the angle which I'll transfer to this side here 
and make that cut. And then I'll put it in place and scribe the two sides because I want the side to actually fit in between which will give it a better detail because you won't see the end grain from the front or back. So I've cut my angle at the top which is spot on now. So what I'll do is scribe the two sides and cut it to the right width. Right, so I've cut the board and let's see if it fits. I have made it slightly on the tighter side. But with a little bit of coaxing, it should go in. It's always better to have it a little bit tighter because it holds itself in place when it comes to screwing. And that fits like a glove. So what I'll do now is mark this bottom angle whilst it's in place, cut that and do the same to the other side. Right, so it's definitely started to take shape now and looking more like a coffee table, especially with them infills on, which makes it look like a solid piece of furniture. And um, the benefit of these infills is that I've actually created a cavity now on both sides of the coffee table, which allows me to pour some concrete in there just to weigh the table down. So when it is transformed into a desk, it doesn't wobble. Right, so I've taken the lid off the trunk and I've also removed the timber moulding that was nailed to the lid itself. And because it doesn't run all the way around the perimeter and you can see it's definitely seen better days, I plan to make a new one with a similar moulding just to give it original look. Right, so the coffee table is ready to be primed and painted. And now I'm going to start the prep for the lid or the top and my original plan was to actually preserve this old distressed look in clear resin however i'm going to give it a facelift with the marble effect which i've done on 12 millimeter mdf and i'm going to stick it to the original board so it'll give it a little bit of thickness and i think by doing the contemporary marble effect it'll go well with the lift off in hinges so they'll complement each other which should look Really good. Right, so it's the next day and everything is primed up. The coffee table, the lid, the shelf, to the timber moulding. And I've gave everything two, three coats, so it's got a good base coat. Excuse the mess, I was working till about 11 o'clock last night. However, it's an exciting day today. It's time to add some colour to the coffee table and I'm going for this green. I think it's very rich important and uh, shouts out vintage to me so yeah I can't wait to get this onto the coffee table and um, I think it'll make a good contrast with the top Right, so we're getting towards the exciting bit now. 
I've primed the board and I've sanded it down with wet and dry paper just to make sure it's smooth and flat. And I've been contemplating about the colours. However, I've finally decided to go for this dark green and copper, which I think make a great combination with the green, making it feel like a vintage look and the copper just adding some rustic effect. Right, so I'm just mixing the green pigment up first, which is going to be my primary colour. So I'm going for a 90% green and a 10% copper. And that's lovely green, that. Okay, so I've mixed my two colours up, the green and copper, which look beautiful. And... There's more of copper because that's my primary colour. So the ratio I've done is 90% green and 10% copper. So I've put masking tape around the edge of the board just so it doesn't drip out and there's uh, no wastage. I'm just going to give it a quick clean with a tacky rag to make sure it's free of dust. And we're good to go. So I'm just going to pour the green on first just going to pour it evenly all over the board and then spread it out make sure I cover it up So I'll just get my spreader and just spread it over so it's nice and even. Right, so I've poured my green onto the board and I've just spread it, give it a random effect because marble is natural stone. So I'm just trying to make it look as natural as possible and as random as well so now I've mixed my copper and I'm just going to give it some copper accent some lines here and there with myself I like everything to be symmetrical so I have to throw that out the window and just yeah go random as possible Just putting lines. The great thing about this is there's no right or wrong, just as I've said, just random as possible. So I'm back in the workshop and I've let the board dry overnight and this is the first time I'm actually going to see it. I can't wait. Wow. I'm actually really impressed with that. I'm really pleased how it's turned out. You can see that the resins have just dried naturally and flowed into one another, giving that marble finish. I think it's important when you're doing something like this not to overthink it too much. So I'm happy how that's turned out. Right, so it's starting to look more like a coffee table now. It's been painted, the top's on, moulding's been pinned on around the edge. 
they just need sanding down and finishing off. I've also put the, the hinges on, the lift off hinges, which I'll just demonstrate. So it's working really well. My slight concern is when you're actually closing the top and opening it, the, the bottom is moving. So as I mentioned, I'm just going to put some concrete in these legs here. So inside there, the cavity of the legs, I'm um, going to pour some concrete in there just to weigh it down and keep it balanced. So before that, I've just put some plastic sheeting on, just in case um, anyone wants to dismantle it and uh, transform it back into a trunk, I guess. Right, so I've got my concrete mixed up, and it's not a strong mix, but I'll just place this inside the legs. So I've spoken to the locksmith and they can't make a key quick enough, so I'm going to attempt to make my own. There's always a first for everything. So I've taken the face plate off and you can see this lock is a five lever lock, so it's got five levers. And this plate here should move back and forth. I have a blank key, and now I just need to cut the teeth out on this so it moves these levers back and forth. So as you can see here, this is the lever that moves back and forth. So the first thing I will need to do is cut the key to the right length. So I've cut the key to the right length and now if I put the key in here, it moves the lever back and forth, which is a good sign. The next step is to insert all these levers one by one and cut the teeth to the right length. Okay, so I've cut my first tooth out for this, which acts as the second lever. So if I just place this into the lock, like so, now this should move the lock back and forth. And I'll do the same for all these levers. So I've cut another notch out in the key for the next lever and I'll just test that out to see if it's working. Place that in there like so. Yep. It's moving the lever back and forth so I've got two more to go. Right, so I've just done another notch in the key and I'll just check if that works. So I'll put fourth lever in, like so. Yep, seems to be working. So I've got one more to do and it's done. Right, so we're nearly towards the end now and I've cut my last notch out, which seems to be working fine with the final lever. We'll just try that out. There we go. It's moving the lock now side to side. However, when I put this face plate on, the key's not moving because it just needs slightly filing in the back over here so i'll do that and then it should be working like a treat
and it's finally done the key fits in nicely and the lock turns beautifully so i'm ready just to fit this back on okay so i've taken the handles off the trunk and i really like these so i do plan to reuse them for the coffee table and also it'll just make it easy to move around because it will be a little bit heavy as well and it's a very simple and effective design it's just a six mil rod that's been bent and it also has a curve at the end so it prevents it from coming coming out and also acts as a stopper so when you go to lift it up your fingers don't get trapped unfortunately the rod is missing from this plate here so i've got a six mil rod which i plan to bend and make a handle out of this So I've taken all the brackets off and I am going to reuse these because it'll just give the coffee table a lot more strength and also make it look like it's original. At first I was thinking maybe I'll just paint them black but I've actually been inspired by this rust back here and I'm thinking well maybe if I clean them down and paint them a rustic copper colour just to give it a quirky look. So that's the plan. So I'm just going to take the paint off the bracket with this sanding pad just to get it back to bare metal and I'll just clamp this in place just to make sure it doesn't move whilst I'm sanding it. So I've just been outside sanding this bracket and getting it back to bare metal and I've just seen this one with the rust surface rust on it so I have another idea I could possibly leave this outside to gather surface rust and then preserve it in clear lacquer so I guess I've got two options at the minute. Right so I want to make the coffee table look rustic and quirky and I came up with the idea of making it look like all the brackets and all the other ironmongery have got surface rust on it and the best way and the quickest way to do that is to mix a solution of hydrogen peroxide vinegar and a pinch of salt and you'll see the results in seconds but you've got to make sure that all the metal is grinded down back to bare metal there's no paint or anything on it Okay, so I've mixed my solution up and I've put it in an empty spray bottle. So this is not astonished, by the way, but watch, it does create astonishing results in seconds. You can already see in a matter of a few seconds it started to gather surface rust and once it's dried I can either give it another a spray or just leave it if it's uh, if it's enough rust on there. And what I plan to do is actually then preserve this rust in a clear lacquer so it's not going to rub off or fade away so it's basically rusted metal and I'm hungry forever right so I left these overnight and look at the surface rust that's formed on all this looks amazing I'm really pleased with this done all the brackets the lock, the handles, and you'll notice that the keyhole plate is slightly different colour 
because this is actually brass. So that's cool, it gives a different effect. Silly me, I forgot to do the key, so I'll give that a quick sand to take the shiny coat off and give that a rust effect. And ironically, I'm going to paint the backs with red oxide to prevent it from rusting. But at the same time, I'm going to protect the fronts with clear varnish or lacquer just to preserve this look and prevent it from fading away. So there's always a method behind the madness. Right, so my next job is to screw all these brackets and handles onto the coffee table, which should definitely give it some character. Transform this old trunk into this coffee table. And because it was a war trunk, I've gone for this rustic vintage look with a modern contemporary marble finish. It does also transform into a desk and can be used as storage. And once it's closed, you can also lock it.